Perfect. We're going to start with leveling up your custom rules. Uh, if you have any questions during this presentation, please uh, ask them right away. Just raise raise your hand in the uh, in the uh, in the webinar or or send a message in the chat. We'll be sure to answer your questions as we go along, so that we are not dropping uh, too many questions at the end, and make sure that we get you following along with the information that we are presenting here. So KeyCAD has a very detailed, very comprehensive custom rule set. These are used in circuit layout in order to enforce specialized conditions that you require for your designs. And you can use these to enhance or modify the not only the DRC rules that the implicit DRC rules that you can specify using the board constraints, but also you can use them to modify some of the behavior of KiCad during routing or during zone fill rule uh, zone fill actions. So and I'll specify which which ones exist where and hopefully clear up some of the confusion around this. So to begin, custom rules. If KiCad doesn't let you do it by itself, you should write a rule and tell KiCad what you want to do and it will follow you. What are these custom rules? These, these are DRC on the, on the left here. You see the beginnings of what a rule could look like. So a rule might have a condition or a constraint, specify a layer or a severity. Uh, uh, this is maybe DRC, but maybe not, because as I said, we can we can sometimes modify the actual behavior of what we see in KiCad as we go along with these custom rules. So to know, does this rule, is this D a rule a DRC rule? So if it is, if it affects its own fill, uh, it's probably, probably not DRC. It's probably going to change the behavior of the uh, of KiCad itself. And if it doesn't affect its own fill, most of these are going to be DRC. So a DRC just means that when you run your DRC check, it's going to pop up an error if something on your layout, on your board, does not match the rule set that you have written. So some examples here. Here, what we're looking at are the pad properties. So when you look at the pad properties, you have some things that you can change using custom rule sets. And down on the bottom, you see the connection to the copper zones. So how the pad connects, does this connect by a solid fill? Does this connect by, therm by thermals? Does it have no connection at all? What kind of uh, zone knockout do do we have, and what are the actual the spoke angles for the thermal relief or the thermal gap, and all of these parameters can be modified by custom rules, and you can modify these so that specific footprints have different parameters or specific classes of footprints, maybe footprints that maybe pads that connect to a power net should have thicker spokes on the thermal relief. This is something that you can specify using custom rules. It won't show up in a DRC check, but it will show up when you do a zone fill because the zone fill is where those spokes come from. Also, clearance override. So pad clearance, solder mask, solder paste, all of these elements are going to change what the output of your fabrication looks like. When we change these elements, these are changed uh, automatic. These are changed automatically. You don't end up, you don't see this in a DRC check because this is not something that you modify somewhere else. Right? You modify it only in here in the pad properties, for instance, or you can modify it in a custom rule if you want to affect a large number of pad properties. 
Now, some other things. In the zone, copper zone properties, the vast majority is not going to give you a DRC check. So any of the shapes or the corners or hatch or type of fill, all of these things are modifying what the zone fill does when you refill the zone. You can set all of these parameters using your custom rules, but they are not going to show up in a DRC check. However, with the one exception here that the, the electrical clearance will show up in a DRC check. So if you end up putting something too close to a copper zone and you don't don't refill. So so that part is going to be very important. If you refill, the copper zone is going to take the clearance into account and provide the appropriate offset from the electrical item, from the copper item on your board that is specified here. But if you don't, DRC will still check. So DRC is still going to catch if you move a pad or a trace too close to the copper fill and don't refill the copper zone before you run DRC. Then you'll flag a, flag a DRC. So that's why we have that one item in the copper zone properties listed as potentially a, a, a DRC error for you. Now, this part, this part is important because when we talk about what this is going to, what this is going to look like, in KiCad itself, we have a priority listing that gets overridden. So your overrides are going to change which ones in your, which parameters are taken as your true value. And that true value is for either DRC or for zone fills. So the first, the bottom of this, of this priority list, which means the one that gets overridden by everything else are going to be the net classes and zone properties. So down in the bottom right here, you can see, well, right behind my head, you can see this copper zone properties. This is where you set the zone properties of the, of the copper zone. These are the baseline defaults, and they are the ones that will get overridden by everything else. So if you don't have any overrides, this is what it's going to go with, but anything, anything can change this. Up above that, solder mask and solder paste defaults. So these, these solder mask and solder paste defaults will override. So these are defaults for your board. Now, this is the middle, middle window here. This is in your board setup. So your board setup, solder mask and solder paste will have, uh, will override, say you have a net class that, uh, that, that specifies any of these, any of these elements, solder mask and solder paste are going to override that. Then after this, after this, then we get to the custom rules. So this is, this is where you are writing the custom rules and this is going to override anything uh, anything below this. So override solder mask, solder paste, net class, zone properties, footprint and pad local overrides. So these, these are going to be when your footprint or your pad has a specific property associated with it. Now, if it has a specific property associated with it, you're, you're going to have to go in and change change that explicitly. And we respect the local overrides on the footprint and pad that you specify in the pad or footprint itself. The reason why we are going to take those as overrides is because by default, they're going to take the, uh, take the normal rules. But if you took the time to go in and change that for a specific footprint or a specific pad, then chances are, we assume that that is something that is required for the functionality of that footprint or that, that pad in any board that you place it on. So we want that to, to override. And then our highest priority, our highest priority is going to be the board setup constraints. These are the ones that get set 
based on your fabricator. So your, your fab house is going to have a minimum clearance. That should go in your board setup constraints. That minimum clearance is going to be the smallest amount of space that they are actually able to produce. And if you make it smaller, they're going to have to go to a different uh, fabrication process. So you want to, you want to have some some hard constraints based on your your fabrication elements. Now, I will put an asterisk here on this on this because you can actually override this by having a custom rule that is narrowly tailored. So your board setup constraints are going to be this board level thing. But say, for instance, you need to have a neck down to actually connect a track to, uh, to a BGA component that you can't fit within the normal clearance you have on the board level. Well, if you have an area-based area -based constraint that is narrowly tailored so you have you have those conditions conditions set up to limit which ones are going to be uh, targeted for clearance or copper width uh, these sorts of things then your your boards your board setup constraints can be overridden by custom rules in this case but in the vast majority of cases we do not and you want if you want the actual the full details, you want to say, well, does this happen? Right? What are the assumptions that are we are that we are making in order to facilitate rapid development of your PCBs? All of these individual assumptions are documented in the KeyCAD documentation website docs.keycad.org and you can find all of this all of these details there as well this can help you to actually pull out individual individual cases when you're not uh, when you're not actually sure which uh, which way this does go we find that our heuristics here on which override happens where matches the vast majority of engineers experience and expectations so hopefully this matches yours and where it doesn't you can uh, definitely you can definitely override with a uh, with a narrowly tailored custom rule so let's talk about constraints what can you constrain so constraints set a tighter limit than board wide constraints so uh, we we're, we're just saying all right we have these board board wide constraints so let me go back one one slide here top right hand corner this is the board setup design rules constraints these are what we're talking about with the board wide constraints these are the the constraints that we expect to 